Hello everybody, Editing Erin is here. Just to let you guys know that I am having a shop update on this Friday, which is May 13th. So I'm going to be restocking all of my floral hook sets. I'm also launching a new design of hook sets as well as pre-orders for sweaters and tote bags. So don't forget to set your alarms and set your reminders because the pre-orders are only available for about three days time. So I'll see you guys all there. And let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Of course, it's your girl Erin and today we're gonna switch it up a little bit from the usual yarn content and I decided to give you guys a fun little plant tour. You guys said that you would like to see some of the plants I've been collecting over the last few months. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of give you guys a little bit of information, some beginner friendly plants, and you know, just kind of show you guys a little bit of the aesthetic going on in my home. If there's any other types of videos or lifestyle content that you guys would like to see here on my channel, then please feel free to leave me a kind comment down below and I'd be happy to film something for you guys. But let's go ahead and jump on into the very first and favorite plants of mine. All right. So first and foremost, this is a plant that Jordan bought for me for Valentine's Day. Her name is Littlefoot because she reminds us kind of of like a leaf that you would see in Land Before Time. But of course, this is the famous Monstera Deliciosa. Now, right off the bat, I know you guys are gonna be like, what the heck is this? I was feeling a little bit too cheap and I was on the hunt for a moss pole because as you guys can see, as she starts to grow and just kind of have more bulk to her, a lot of her stems start to kind of bend and branch and she does need a little bit of moral support. So Jordan and I have kind of shoved this like little metal tool here all the way down into your soil. And of course we've used some basic cotton yarn just to kind of help keep these stems up and give them a little bit more support than they would on their own. But here she is in a super cute like wicker looking basket. And like I've shown you guys, she is huge. Now the Monstera is typically marked by these beautiful philodendron looking leaves, but of course they do have these like cutouts in them. It's very sturdy and kind of stands up on its own. So yeah, like I said, this is Littlefoot and we're really excited because over the last week, I love how I'm just shoving the plant in your face, but over the last week we had insane growth and we actually have a brand new baby leaf right here. So I believe I did take a couple photos and videos prior to when this first leaf popped up, but I was really surprised on how fast this leaf came about. I wanna say, about three and a half weeks ago, we saw a tiny, tiny little blossoming of a new leaf down here. And when Jordan and I came home five days later, this leaf had literally grown six inches. So we got to watch her unfurl from start to finish. And this new baby leaf is so gentle, so thin. So I had to keep really good care of her and stay really consistent with my watering schedule because typically the Monstera, I wanna say they wanna be watered every five to seven days. So I will water her about once every week. So this is plant number one in the plant tour. Let's go ahead and set her down and pull the next one out for you guys. All right, so I'm actually really excited to show this next plant to you guys. So this is actually in the same family as the Monstera because I do believe the Monstera is a philodendron, but this cute little vining plant is a philodendron cordatum. I'm gonna have everything written out here on screen in case I am incorrect. But I did recently learn that with Monsteras, they actually need a lot more aeration within their soil. So I chose to switch up and repot her with a lot of chunky soil. So I just went to the store and I believe I grabbed like orchid bark and I paired that with equal parts of perlite and I believe sphagnum peat moss. So we did also throw in some perlite. So if you guys look really, really closely, you can see that her soil mixture has these 
big, huge, chunky parts to her. And that's just gonna help her stay well drained and well aerated. And honestly, I have to say that it did pay off because look how happy she is. I'm so glad this is one of the plants that has been thriving here in my home. But this gorgeous beauty is lovey. And like I said earlier, she is more of a vining type of philodendron. So I'm really happy to be showing her to you guys because we actually got her, I wanna say back in December and she quickly started going downhill. I'm honestly not too sure what was wrong in the first place. I might have been under or over watering her but since December, she has made an impressive comeback. I wanna say back in December, she ended up losing almost all of her leaves. She only had a few stragglers that were hanging on. So thankfully it's been about five or so months now. And can you guys just see all of this new growth? Like up here on the very top, you guys can see these lighter colored leaves. So these are her new sprouts, her new babies, and all over this bad boy, I mean like everywhere, there's new growth like even right here. So she's coming back, she's doing really well. And in case you guys couldn't tell, we decided to name her Lovey because she has, you know, heart shaped leaves. So with Lovey, I have learned that she does like more of a medium indirect light. If I put her too much into the bright light, she kind of reacts a little bit funky. So if you have more of like a shaded part of your home that does receive indirect light, I highly recommend you guys saving your plants and putting them into safer conditions. So again, I am learning along the way, but I also made this really gorgeous macrame or crochet pot holder. And I love these like little tassels that I have coming down off of her. So she has a lot of character. She's really gorgeous. And when it comes to her soil and her fertilizer mixture, honestly, I chose to repot my philodendron in just standard outdoor potting mix mixed with a little bit of perlite and chunky soil, just like I did with the previous Monstera. So yeah, she's doing really happy. She's thriving. And I do like to give lovey and previous little foot a good misting i want to say once every other day or once every three days because these are more of a tropical style plant they do require a little bit more humidity a little bit more moisture they have to stay wet their leaves are really really happy when i spray them down so plant number two so much new growth. I'm really happy with her. And at the end of this video, I will get a little bit into the type of plant food that I literally give all of my house plants. I give them the same exact type of plant food. And thankfully, I think that is why she has come back so, so strong. So plant number two of this house tour, say hello to lovey. <laughs> I've just gone ahead and pulled a few of my smaller plants off of the shelf. So let's actually go ahead and show you guys this first one, which has actually really quickly become one of my favorite plants, just because she's really low maintenance and she's grown so much in about the month and a half that Jordan and I have had her. So this is Pip. She is a Peperomia Hope and she is marked by these really gorgeous variegation. Can you guys see all that? It looks really crazy, but honestly to me, Pip is a very low maintenance type of plant. Although she's not classified as a succulent, she kind of resembles and does have the texture of your standard succulent. So I like to keep her in medium, indirect light and she seems to really, really love the light. I feel like the more sunshine that I give her, the more variegation she has within all of her leaves. So really, really gorgeous texture. Just look at the quality of this plant. I'm really happy. And in case you guys are wondering, we also had to tie some yarn around her three major stems because as she's getting longer and heavier, she can't really support herself on her own. So we've just tied some basic, simple acrylic yarn just to give her a little bit more structure, but very, very basic plant. I haven't had to repot her yet since I brought her home, but I can see that she is in a standard chunky potting mix. So I wanna say that there is that orchid bark in there. I can see a ton of perlite and more than likely she does have some standard outdoor potting mix mix. So it's a little bit hard to see in there, but you guys can really see all that perlite in there. And typically when there's perlite in your plant, that helps to aerate your plant and allow for better drainage. So with her, like I said, medium indirect light, I think she could even thrive in a little bit of low light. And I only water her about once a week. Very basic, very simple. This is my Peperomia Hope. 
So let's go ahead, set her down to the side because this next boy has kind of put me through the ringer a little bit, but surprisingly, I don't know what I've done to bring her back to life. She seems to be doing really, really well. So I actually picked up this plant about two months back and the salesperson said that this is a different Bacchia. Again, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but she's super gorgeous. She has a lot of structure to her and I like that her leaves are nice and bright and light. So because she's a different Bacchia, I have named her Beethoven. I don't really know why, but let's go ahead and bring you guys in nice and close. She's got these really gorgeous white lime green pieces here in the center, followed up with a little bit of this darker green foliage around the edges. And as you can see, she is a very upright plant. So like I mentioned earlier, when I first purchased her, within the first week of me bringing her home, several of her leaves were going yellow and dropping on the very bottom and I had to cut them off. So I assumed that she was dying, but if you guys can look really, really closely here, there is new growth here in the center. There's also a bunch of new growth over here on the side. So she's actually doing really, really happy. And again, with her, I actually keep her in a brighter indirect light because I have learned that she does need a little bit more sunshine than my other plants. And if you guys look very closely here, she has a very, very chunky mix. This soil is almost too well draining to the point that the water rushes out of it really, really fast. So I still have yet to repot her because I don't want to shock her. And she seems to be doing okay on her own but very, very chunky mix. I wanna say it's just that standard orchid bark mixed with perlite. And honestly, that looks to be about it. So this is Beethoven, and I can't wait to see how much new growth she has in the next few months because these plants can actually get very tall and very wide. So hopefully over the next few years, she can expand to be about three feet tall and probably about this wide. She's gonna provide really nice bulk and volume within your home. I just hit her on my face. But yeah, here is plant number three or four. Let's go ahead, keep it moving, show you guys some more really gorgeous plants. I'm actually really surprised I'm speeding right along with this plant tour. So next up is another Peperomia type of plant, but this is the Peperomia Rosso. And if I bring you guys in nice and close, like I said, she is a Peperomia, but on the bottom side, of her leaves, she does have this really gorgeous burgundy red and her leaves are defined more with this watermelon type of stripe. But again, these are more of like a droplet shape than the standard Peperomia round shape. And she's got these really cute shoots coming off the very top of her. So she has a lot of character, but she is very, very tiny. She's just in a standard four inch pot. But with Peperomias like this Peperomia Rosso, they do require high or bright indirect light. So if you guys have like medium to low shaded areas in your house, this puppy is probably going to suffer a great deal. I have had to relocate her a few times and find a really good lighting source for her. And for the most part, she really hasn't grown too much in size for about the last two months. But if you do look really, really closely inside the plant, you can see a bunch of new growth in there. So there's a bunch of like new little babies flourishing right here on the inside of this plant. But as for the width and the height, it pretty much looks about the same as when I picked her up. So going along with the Peperomia kicks, let me go ahead and pull out the biggest Peperomia plant that I have. You guys are going to love this one. This is actually one of my top favorite plants that I currently own. This is another Peperomia plant, but this is the watermelon. And this is clearly marked and distinguished by these really gorgeous, more oval or round shaped leaves that clearly have, you know, that watermelon pinstripe on them. So this guy is actually doing really, really well. And he's actually grown a good amount since we first picked him up. So again, going along with the Peperomia kick, they do require high or bright indirect light. So when I first brought her home, I had her more in a medium to low indirect light area, and she was starting to droop a lot. She didn't look as happy and I ended up losing a good amount of leaves here on the bottom side of the plant but ever since I kind of just corrected the area in my house in which she sits at every single day she has been flourishing and this is going to be probably a little bit hard to tell 
but I want you guys to try to take a look on the inside, way, way, way deep in here on this plant. Can you guys see all these new growths in there? There's so many little leaves on the inside, which is a really good sign. You know, when you have new growth on a plant, it's kind of like a surefire sign that you're taking really good care of your plant and that it's happy. And you probably shouldn't change too many things about the state in which it's currently in. So like I said, with a majority of my plants, they do need watering about every five to seven days. I pretty much water my plants all at the same time, one time a week. So typically Saturdays are my watering days. I like to make it a little bit easier on myself and kind of bunch everything together instead of spacing it out throughout the week. But yeah, I'm actually really happy to see how much this plant has grown in such a short amount of time. And just by taking a peep here on the inside of my pot, I can tell again, it's another very aerated, well-draining soil mixture. So very basic, as long as you have a nice bright area in your house, this baby should thrive. I'm so happy with her. But just look at how gorgeous these stripes are. I think it's so stunning. And there's just so much new growth here. Look at that. Look at all those new baby leaves. She's really, really happy loves the sun and so far i've also noticed that the peperomias themselves don't require too much humidity a lot of my other plants like the philodendrons like the monstera and lovey and a few other ones do require very very high humidity so you constantly need to like spray them down and give them a heavy misting but i've noticed with her whether i missed her or not she seems to look just about the same all right so at this point i only have a few more plants to show you guys and i'm going to be honest and show you the real state of my plants you know i'm not out here trying to front i do have a couple plants that are not in the best state possible but i'm okay with that as it is this next one in case you guys couldn't tell does belong in the same family as my monstera deliciosa except this is a monstera as well but it's also noted as the swiss cheese vine or the swiss cheese plant so right here can you guys see it looks very very similar to the deliciosa but they have a lot more of these fragile swiss cheese holes all throughout them and the leaves themselves are actually a lot more delicate than the previous monstera yeah these leaves feel a lot more frail and not as like hardened as the other plant but that's why i like this one so much and i believe the reason why the swiss cheese differs from the previous monstera is that the swiss cheese plant is actually a vining plant so like i showed you guys earlier with that little stick rod that is sticking out of the monstera if you guys end up getting like a moss pole or just any kind of vining pole for this to latch onto it will eventually like trail i believe it's a trailing plant so i haven't really gotten around to that yet and i feel like that's why some of these look a little bit droopy is because they do need a little bit of help and support now one thing i do want to note about the swiss cheese vine at least in the case or the situation of my home environment is if i do not stick to a strict watering schedule with this guy you'll notice immediately that she's very unhappy i want to say about three or four weeks back i might have missed her watering schedule by a few days and when i came back to take a look at her all of these and i mean all of these were extremely drooped down it looked very very sad and it actually took me a few weeks to perk her back up so that's how i know that she's doing a little bit better than she did before because although some of these do look a little you know sad and droopy these main vines right here in the center are very sturdy and strong and perky so at the very least i know that she is on the way of recovery and if you guys look really closely here, like I said, she's not in the best state possible, but when you look really, really close, you can see new growth right here. So this leaf right here still has to unfurl, which means, you know, she has new growth on her. Let's see, where else does she have new leaves? I know I have some dead leaves in here, so don't judge me. I haven't pulled them out yet. But even like right here, can you guys see this new baby leaf right there? So she is on the way of new growth. Even right here, this little guy right here needs to be plucked out. 
but he's currently unfurling. So there's a ton of new growth on this beautiful bad boy. And hopefully if I just continue to take really good care of this plant, eventually she will trail. She'll get a little bit longer and larger, but I just love how delicate all of these leaves look. See, we have some unfurling ones right here. And again, when it comes to more of the monstera type or philodendron type of plants, they do need a heavy dose of misting. So another reason I could tell that she was suffering when all of her leaves were down was because I wasn't giving her enough moisture. And although I do have a tiny little humidifier here at home, I have learned that it's just not large enough for the space that all of my plants are in. So I will need to upgrade the humidifier size that I currently have, which is why I just choose to go in with a regular spray bottle and just mist everything down until this thing is literally covered with droplets. But she's doing a lot better than she once was. Now, right here, guys, whenever you see a plant that has dying or brown leaves, one thing I want to note and that I've learned from personal experience is once the leaf yellows or browns, it doesn't get better. Even if you recover the rest of the plant itself and it starts to perk up, the leaves that have already brown and died like these ones, they will never come back. They'll never turn green again. So right here, I can actually just go ahead and grab some scissors and chop these bad boys off right now. And it's not gonna harm it at all because if you actually cut off the dead growth, that allows for more of the plant's energy to go to the healthier leaves instead of committing its energy to the sad already dead leaves on the plant so I'm gonna go ahead and hang Gouda up but let's go ahead and show you guys the last few plants all right so at this point you have probably guessed that this is my most healthy plant and this is actually the one that I am the most proud of because she has gone through a little bit of trial and tribulation but I have slowly brought her back and she is thriving. So in case you guys couldn't tell, this is actually a pothos plant. I believe she's a golden pothos, and you can tell that she is a golden pothos because most of her leaves are marked by these really slight yellow marbling. So there's not too, too much of that color variation going on. Now let's just go ahead and turn her around to the backside because she is thriving back here. Can you guys see how strong some of these limbs are. Typically the pothos plants are like vining or trailing type of plants. So for the majority, you guys can see all of her super, super long vines. But here on the backside, these stems are actually so strong that they're not even like falling over or trailing. They're just perking right up, which is a really good signifier again that she's getting plenty of water and sunshine. And in case I didn't mention, we have named her Piccolo because when she is low on water, you can really, really see and tell very easily a lot of her limbs and vines will kind of start to shrink. A lot of her leaves will start to curl up a little bit and she'll look kind of just as if she's slowly dying. But the moment I give her water, I wanna say within three to five hours, she seems to grow and expand exponentially, which is why we've named her Piccolo. But she's doing really, really well. She's very happy. And even here on the bottom of her vines, there's so much new growth on these things. I'm really surprised how much she has taken off ever since we brought her home. Now, I will note that the cool thing about the pothos plant, at least my golden pothos, is that she can thrive in really bright indirect light. But in case you guys kind of have a more sheltered or shadowed home, these kinds of pothos plants will also thrive in low, medium, indirect light as well. So when you have a really dark room, honestly, you just need to water your plant a little bit less because the water's not evaporating as quickly as it would if you had it in a bright room like this front room that I'm currently in. So I have moved her here to the front room just because she's getting so big. And I kind of wanted to test out the waters and see how much she would grow if I gave her more sunlight and more water. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I feel like just more sunlight and watering her more frequently has done the absolute best for her. And I couldn't be happier 
with how she looks. I definitely plan on getting future types of pothos plants for my room because like I said, the entire room is pretty medium to low light. So I feel like just filling up my room with a bunch of these gorgeous vining, trailing plants like this one are gonna look so so stunning so yeah definitely one of my favorite plants i have ever currently owned and i do plan on expanding my pothos library if you will all right so after reassessing my entire plant collection i've realized i have quite a bit more to show you guys so i'm probably gonna cut this one short and if you guys liked this plant tour i might follow it up with a plant tour part two and I can show you guys the rest of my plants and also future plants that I'm planning on getting either today or tomorrow. So before I go ahead and wrap up the introduction to all of my plants, I wanted to quickly highlight a few really fun tiny plants that I have been secretly working on. If you guys have seen some of my previous studio vlogs, then you've seen me talk about this plant that I was waiting to get off of Etsy. So this next plant is actually a very, very expensive plant, as in it cost me a very pretty penny, but I feel like this is gonna be definitely worth it as I'm trying to expand my collection. Now, if you guys couldn't tell right off of the bat, this is another philodendron plant, but this is the pink princess. So this is also known as the PPP, but it's a philodendron pink princess. And she's really easily marked by these really gorgeous pastel pink colors on her leaves. So she does have a slight variegation to her. I know some pink princess have a lot more and some have less, but what I wanted to note first and foremost is if you guys are interested in purchasing really gorgeous or fun plants off of Etsy, I really highly recommend that you give it a try and you know maybe start with a smaller, less inexpensive plant and see how it arrives. So I really took the leap of faith when I purchased this order and thankfully this plant has done nothing but grow ever since I got her. So I know you guys are probably thinking like, wow, Erin, that plant is super tiny. You think she's grown? Yes. And honestly, let's just take a look again at these gorgeous markings on her. Look at these pink variegations. And the new growth that I wanted to talk about with you guys with this pink princess and the reason why I'm so happy with it, I want to say a about three or so weeks after I got her in the mail, I started to notice a very tiny little growth on one of her stems. So after watering her more frequently and taking really good care of her, just a few days ago, this new baby leaf popped out of one of her little sprouts. And I accidentally ripped her leaf a little bit. I was trying to assist her out of the other stem because she was trapped. So I did end up ripping her a little bit, but if you guys look really, really closely, look at that, that new leaf right there is variegated. And one thing that I did learn when I was doing my research on variegated plants is even though it puts out new growth, you're not guaranteed that new leaf or that new stem is going to have color in it or that it's going to be variegated. Each leaf has its own DNA and different identity. So it's kind of a surprise every time that there's new growth on your plant. And I cannot believe that this new growth looks to be almost completely pink it looks so gorgeous and to top it off while this thing is still in the process of unfurling can you guys see this new growth right there because i have a smaller plant like this one she's only in a two inch pot i do need to water her more frequently but yeah like i was saying with a smaller plant like this in a two inch pot she will dry out a lot faster than these plants that get a lot more water in a six inch pot so i want to say i actually water this pink princess once every four to five days and when i water them i do water them thoroughly so when it comes to overwatering, another tip that i have learned in case you guys are interested in hearing all of my plant tips is that overwatering doesn't have anything to do with the amount of water that you give a plant it has more so to do with how often you water the plant so my trick when it comes to watering these plants is that when i'm pouring water into all of their pots i make sure that water runs 
all the way through the plant and that it's dripping, soaking wet. And then I'll set it aside for about five to 10 minutes and let everything drain and drip out of it. And then set it to the side back in its lovely place in the home where it will stay for like the next week to dry out slowly over time. So like I said, with this little two inch pot, I will literally pour as much water as this pot will take and make sure that water is running all the way, dripping all the way out and make sure that it's sopping, soaking wet. And then once it's finished draining, I know that it has just the right amount of water that it needs. So yeah, it's gonna be, I don't know, tip number probably 10 or 11 at this point in this video. So that is the pink princess. So let's slowly start to transition this video into the propagation segment. Now, because I am new to plant care here in my home, I've really only been doing it for about six months now. I am still new at propagations and I've only really tried this on one plant so far but I really wanted to show you guys how well some of these plants can take to propagation. So in case you guys didn't know, propagation is when you take a stem or a certain section of your plant, you place it in water or soil, and you pretty much start growing an entirely new plant. So the plant I'm about to show you is the one that I told you guys I have accidentally overwatered too many times. So a few months back when I was trying to transplant her into a different pot, which was mistake number one, a bunch of her stems broke off of the original body of the plant. So instead of having to just chop off a stem from the plant, I just took one of the stems that already fell off and I placed it in a little glass vial like this one. Now these plants have been propagating, I wanna say for a little bit over two months now at this point. And if I bring you guys in super, super close, hopefully you guys are able to see all of those really gorgeous roots in there. She's taken off so fast. Honestly, from the day that I first put her in this glass vial, her stems were only about maybe two inches sticking out of the very top of the glass. And since then, you can clearly see that this thing has taken off. It's grown at least three times its original size. But within two weeks of me propagating this plant into just regular clean water, I was already having these little baby roots inside of the glass. So that's a really great sign to let you know that your plant is still growing. There's still life. There's still a chance for it. So like I said, they've been sitting in this glass vial for about two months, and I believe it is currently time to transplant her back into her original pot. So congrats, you're now a plant parent. You have plant babies, hoorah for you, right? but I'm just so happy with how much growth has been going on in this vial. Like that is insane to me. I've kind of just learned over time that not all plants are going to be happy in the living or home situation that you have. And it takes a very long time to troubleshoot and correct the issues within your plants. So in case you guys are like me and you have a couple plants that are thriving and you have a couple that are suffering or they're already on their way out, don't beat yourself up about it. I've done that to myself way too much. And I've learned that I just need to be more forgiving and understanding that this new hobby of mine does take time. It's a learning process. And honestly, if you are a plant mom or a plant owner, then you know we can all be honest with ourselves and say that we've lost some plants along the way. It's nothing new, okay? It's nothing groundbreaking. But yeah, it's just gonna be my little words of wisdom to you guys. I do have a couple other plants of mine that are a little bit struggling, but I feel like I'll save those for future videos because this video is already going to be way too darn long and we need to wrap it up. I love being able to care and tend to these plants and honestly, nothing makes me happier than seeing new growth or new leaves on my plants. Like I said, this pink princess, such a tiny expensive little plant, but just seeing these new growths have made me so extremely happy. So before I go ahead and wrap up this video, because I know you guys are going to ask. All right, so this is actually the plant liquid food that I give my plants every single time I water them. So again, that's about 
one time a week. I actually just ordered this off of Amazon because it had really, really great reviews, but it's just this indoor plant food. And I feel like for the most part, what's in this indoor plant food is really just nitrogen, phosphate, and sulfur. So it's all the right nutrients that help to make your plant grow. Now keep in mind guys, if you're going to use this, really recommend that you read the directions. Each plant food has their own ratio of water to plant food. So if you overdo it with this, you can actually kill your plants. The more plant food that you use does not necessarily mean that your plant is going to grow more. So really recommend that you read the directions. For my plant food, it does recommend that you use half a teaspoon of this plant food for every two cups of water. So make sure that you're really reading the directions, half a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, half a teaspoon for every two cups of water. So my little trick is I will get a big mixing dish or bowl here in my kitchen. I'll fill it up with about 10 cups of water and then I'll do the math to make sure that I'm adding the right amount of teaspoons into this huge jug of water. And then from there, I'll just bring all of my plants here into the kitchen or I'll take everything outside and water them one by one. But again, they're all getting the same ratio of water, the same ratio of plant food and I feel like it is strictly because of this plant food that some of my plants like lovey or the philodendron have seen tremendous growth so so with that being said that is pretty much going to wrap up this plant tour video I hope you guys really liked this type of video I like to kind of break out of the norm and not just post my usual fiber art content but a little bit more lifestyle what's going on here at home behind the scenes if you guys want a plant tour part two or a how do I water how do I propagate type of video then also let me know down below I hope that you guys are all doing well and you're staying safe I'll be seeing you all very soon take care bye